Welcome to the True Potential Women Summit. We're back and being able to talk about how ambitious women can overcome anxiety and self-doubt to be able to communicate with confidence so that they receive the significance and loving connection that they desire. Today we have a very special guest. Her name is Kate O'Brien and she is a transformational coach. Her and her husband uh, work together and really help support people in transforming lives on a global scale. They uh, have an annual summit that they put on where they have visionaries and luminaries and global thinkers uh, come together as a collective to really raise the consciousness and the awareness on different topics around transformation. Thank you so much for being here today. So excited to have you. Wonderful. So tell us a little bit about uh, your background and what you, what really inspires you, what really drives um, what you do and the work that you do. Mm, thank you. Uh, what really I enjoy doing is actually creating and using just different uh, mediums to share messages that I actually think are um, important messages and I think sometimes we can get so focused on what's the next strategy, what's the next thing I need to learn, what's the next way in which I need to develop myself. And I feel like sometimes it's just more like if there's a couple of things that we um, realize within ourselves, then it sort of it opens the doorway that then we get to be the answer ourselves rather than constantly looking for the answer outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that's primarily the shift that, I want to help make and that's the shift that I find juicy and when I see people for example stop like looking like how do I fix this thing or uh, solve my problem what's the answer to this and actually go you know what I actually already am pretty awesome and I've already got everything I need within myself and sure I'm going to figure it out uh, figure it out along the way and yeah life just feels messy at times and it's okay to feel messy I don't have to try and like fit like the messiness isn't a problem to solve from then, we can actually just be more creative in what we're up to. Yeah. So life being something to survive or fix or improve upon, like we can see it more of as a game and we can just create any way, not when we finally get to a certain place. And so really, I think that's what I like doing. And it's funny because I've trained in so many modalities and done all of the training under the sun, and yet I feel like after a decade of that, this is what I've come to. So the messages I like to share now are simple, um, but I feel like sometimes they challenge us, and I like using different mediums to do that. Like, for example, the other day I shared a vlog, um, and in the vlog it was me and my husband, we went out on a sexy romantic date night that he'd spent like three months planning and preparing and he was Clark Kent and I was Lois Lane and it actually ended up being that I can't handle my tequila mm -hmm. and, and I didn't realize that and then I was in bed by 10 30 and possibly power chucked in the toilet and you know what you're like why because I actually had some messages saying why are you sharing this crap and you know what here's why I'm sharing this crap is because we need to be reminded that it's okay to be playful. Mm -hmm. That in our spirituality, we don't lose our essence. Mm -hmm. That it's not like this is right. When I meditate, I'm right. And if I want to have a night out on the odd occasion with my husband and have a tequila shot and play because we have the utter privilege of playing because we have a heartbeat. Well, but that's, you know... That's, Oh, and right. that's our essence as children, you know. I, I think really we, we had it right at the beginning, you know, to seek, to be seeking, to be playful, to be curious. And I think rather than making us wrong or feel like we need to prove ourselves or drive or know more or be more or, you know, I think it's really just coming back to just uh, self-love and really... Uh, trusting ourselves and I think somewhere along the way self-doubt or questioning or seeking outside of ourselves for approval or validation you know because of grades you know it, we're kind of programmed in that way of external focus and I think really we we realize that what we're searching for is really within ourselves and we we help we hold the keys but it's the last place we look <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. 
Absolutely. It feels like people are waiting for permission, but not even realizing they're allowed it. Yeah. And I think just being able to be in the messiness, I think that's a, to be able to be in our vulnerability, I think that that takes incredible courage. And I think shame is kind of this thing that holds us back from, from doing that. But really, just being human and being vulnerable and open, it actually brings us closer in connection with one another rather than rejected and like outcast, which is probably what holds us back. Would you say? Yes. Absolutely. I mean, I think shame's a huge big thing. And I think there's also a, what I've found in my work with always primarily myself and then the work that I obviously do with the people I work with is that shame is a huge thing and there's such a big difference between having a conversation around shame and then actually showing up and being seen. And see, the thing is we can talk about being seen but actually allowing ourselves to be seen is very different. Yeah. See, I just want to go back to this example of the vlog because it's, it's such a not an insignificant thing. But in sharing that, I felt the part of me not wanting to be seen. Right. And I was, isn't that amazing? It just shows that little part where, like, the potential for shame or the potential for being judged is, which is hence why I felt it so important to share. And in any of these conversations where we actually are willing to say, yeah, this is something that I, I want to control how you see me, or I, 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 I'm wanting to show this part of myself in my life, but this part here, I'm going to keep it tucked away because these, I've got some kind of story around that. Um, the willingness to go there, I think, is, um, is challenging, but also it's really liberating. And would you say that, because a lot of times they say, you know, our, our mess is our message, and being able to... I guess in in exploring that, when do you think that the right time to actually share that that piece that maybe is that messy part? Because obviously, being in the middle of it um, can be challenging because we haven't like worked through it where it's actually become purposeful. Do you have any ideas on on really for people in their self expression? of being transparent and open and honest and when it falls into like processing and when it actually falls into the category of this is purposeful and intentional because it's for the collective good. Can you share that? I think, yeah, I think it's a great question and I'm not going to come with a, like an answer of this is how I think it should be and this is how I think it right. is. Right. I genuinely think trust yourself and that there's different things for different purposes and I think it comes back to an intent and intention. Right. So the, the, my intent and my intention is that I, in all honesty, I look out in the world and I get frustrated with the bullshit. Yeah. And it, um, the amount of people that I know behind the scenes who are coaches, because we're just going to talk about coaches just for a moment, who are not at all speaking the truth of who they are. Mm -hmm. It might be that they're either saying something that either is not actually true or it might be that they just that they are showing a portion of the truth of themselves. Mm -hmm. So either end of the spectrum. But they just really won't won't go anywhere else. And um, I feel frustrated by that. And so my intention for my commitment and what I'm committed to doing is um, not doing that within myself. So yeah, because of that intention I often share myself during my processing. Yeah, because I because I think that it's really different to say like for example last month we were doing a session um, with my group I've got about three hundred people inside of a space and we were talking about emotion and I was talking about you know some I, the strategies around emotion and it was it was a great conversation people were really getting it the the next week I was actually very triggered with my hubby. So in the eye of the upset, now I could have waited to get through that and there's no problem with that. And then a day later, spoken about it really calmly and retrospectively. But what I did was got the camera rolling while I was in the middle of like in the eye of the storm yeah. and just like, went through my processing while I had eyes on me so that people could also go, ah, oh, she too means that I'm also okay. Right. And I think we can, we can, understand to a point when we see people talking about it retrospectively once they've come through it and they kind of package it in a certain way. Right. But there's something so different to actually see someone who we could look up to actually go through their own processing that happens that goes, 
Oh, so we are actually all human beings. Wow. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Next time I'm going through, I'm just going to give myself another, like a, an extra bucket load of permission to be a human being, right? Yeah. So in answer to your question, I think it comes down to intent. That's my intention. And then Absolutely. I also think that some people, I don't, I don't think it would necessarily be useful because I think sometimes um, when you're still really navigating that space, that sometimes it's probably more useful to process on your own because these are very vulnerable aspects we're dealing with and it can just help um, your processing faster and then you can share it later. So yeah, right. intense. Indeed. Absolutely. And I, I, I agree with that because it, when working with my clients, even when they share something that is in, is in their personal journey and I have a personal story that I can relate to and share, it's almost as though that story, one, validates their experience, but also uh, gives them insight to move through it in a different way. And it just allows us to be like connected in that way because so, so often it's the collective that's going through this experience around these raw spots. And I think talking about it rather than keeping it silent and secret and, and in shame doesn't serve any of us really. It just uh, blocks us from evolution and growing. So with, with that, like with your, um, in your relationship, in working with your partner in doing these transformational summits, as well as, um, different the pro, different programs that you do. How do you um, how do you be able to create that that connection and that in the in the work that you're doing um, with others and in that partnership with working together and being in partnership with with your partner. Massive trial and error <laughs> um, and massive <laughs> commitment. Yeah, we've been together for uh, 15 years and married for 10 of those years and been working together for the last decade in this. And, yeah, we have uh, who we are now and the people that we are now and the marriage that we have now is entirely different to where we were 10 years ago. You know, 10 years ago, no, sorry, before that, you know, when we first met, I was on drugs. I had bulimia. He had bulimia. He was a walkie. Like, we just, it was so different. So to be able to actually go from the where we were now to where we are, I, I think in itself is a miracle. Yeah. And I think it also just goes to show like literally the power of um, what is possible for us mm-hmm. as humans. Um, because I think rightfully we should be divorced by now. But so in relation to your question, we have a really high context for um, for why we're together and our commitment. Mm-hmm. And we have so yeah we got married but we redesigned and recommitted our relationship together to be a spiritual a spiritual partnership which for us it means that yeah we're together and it's for me marriage or a typical kind of traditional relationship is you find someone and then they complete you or they there's an, there's an expectation of making me happy and if you're not making me happy then there's perhaps something wrong with the relationship that then you know right. whereas the context that we've committed to together is we're here for a purpose we we choose to be together and we're going to use both our, um, what's there to both grow us and also to grow us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it means everything that comes up. Yeah. That means no stone unturned. That means no conversation stepped over. And it means nothing hidden. And that's a really big um, call. So when we really, really did this a number of years ago, so eight years ago, we re-committed and committed to a space of integrity together and 100% authenticity. And, yeah, we had things we had to clean up. Yeah. We had conversations that we had to have that we didn't want to have. And that was really challenging, but it opened up a new door and it laid the foundation that now we really get that those places that we don't want to go to, the conversations that most people will avoid because we want to avoid upset with our partner – they are like where we have to seek out. Mm-hmm. You know, just recently, I think three weeks ago, I realized, and if you, you know, you notice how in your life you can be just kind of cruising along and you can feel a disconnection or like something is off that you're stepping over, but it's not really, you can also not really put your finger on it. And because you've got kids and you've got life. Yeah, business. It's, yeah, it's like you just, 
you'll get around to it, you're sure it will pop up, and that's kind of how it was until like just something happened. And it was just like it was in my face, like it's like we got to deal we, with this. We have yeah, to work on this. And, and like 14 year old daughter was out of the house, and you know nine year old son was up. And I was like, we have to, we really have to talk about this. And what I actually need to say when I actually connected in and went like, what am I really not communicating here? And I knew it the whole time when I realized when I realized it. It was just I was scared to actually say this. And so to be able to say it and to actually stay with saying it and stay with what was there for me, while also having space for him to have his whatever was going on for him. And just like literally the tenderness of what we were talking about and the elegance of what we stayed with the conversation. I was really proud of ourselves. And then after four years, sorry, four hours, like the, what opened up was the potential for a new relationship together. Right. And I think these are things that people are stepping over constantly in relationships. We're stepping over them like a lump under the carpet and we kind of trip on the lump every time, but we just kind of, every time we troll it down, it kind of just goes a little bit Until deeper. it implodes and, or explodes. Yeah. And we're both avoiding what's there, but we're also avoiding deeper intimacy. And that's the, that's the cost. The cost is we are in, um, I think, relationships that are starved of the real intimacy that we can have. Right. It's almost like we'll go with the processed food rather than the real meal that we really want and we crave. Uh, and so, but that requires effort. You have to prepare the meal and make, to make it taste good, <laughs> which is sometimes avoidance is, you know, we get, we get what we put in. And so I think what you're talking about is really the importance of the depth of intimacy, of being able to go to those raw places within yourself and open up, like open up the kimono, <laughs> you know, so to speak, and each other be really vulnerable. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So being able to, to really open up because that really, then we get the real deal of what we want. So... So with that, like with with deeper connection um, in relationships with other other women, and like, what are some things of that you would suggest in creating sisterhood, or what your thoughts are of sisterhood and and uh, women collectively coming together to be able to support one another versus knock each other down? So there's kind of this different cultures that come up in each of these areas, and um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think um, for me, my little journey around this has been, I would say, growing up, I didn't have, there were big periods in my life that I, life that I didn't have sisterhood, that I didn't have friendships because that, what felt like it was there and it could have been even what I was seeing, I don't know if it was there, but I, I saw competition and so I just kind of was a bit more isolated for big, huge periods in my life. And then just in recent years, I've got, you know, a, a few really close women in my life who are just who are powerhouses, uncompromising powerhouses. And when I say that, I'm not um, – I'm talking about women who just really can hold space for it all in there within themselves, all of the emotions, be okay with all of who they are rather than – like just doing this one thing and then kind of rejecting all the rest. Yeah. So that's really the um, the people that I want close to me are people who are who can also um, meet me there. And so I don't have a lot of people who are really really close. And yeah, um, but I think trust yourself, and that's often my answer is trust yourself. But seek out definitely people who are at a space that you want to be at as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I think sometimes, you know, when we're young, you know, for many people on the call, it, it's about like having a lot. And I think you bring up, I think having a small group that is, that you can really go to an intimate place and everyone is is willing to grow and has that capacity and really... It doesn't have to be a big number. It can be a small group, a uh, tight-knit community of people that you can be willing to go to all the depths of each other's personhood. Yeah, we've been talking a lot lately about um, having a team. So I'm a big fan of saying, like, you know, actually, who is on your team? 
And so that could be sisters, could be select women who just really are just are powerful in what we need. But also like looking outside of that as well. But I think whatever it is, it's actually having a, like a team behind you because I think that like, sometimes we can feel a little bit isolated in our journey. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I've got an energy healer. Mm-hmm. I've got a spiritual healer who is just incredible. So I've actually sought out in the world, like, who do I see is just masterful in this, who can hold space for me when I need it, especially because I'm holding space for hundreds of people that are in my coaching. So I need, like, like who's got me? Right. And it's funny because I did that for so long without that. And it's interesting because, yeah, we can operate without support. We can operate without a team. But are we, like, really operating and I think that's where team comes in. And so one person also I've got who's just a committed listener. Because my commitment is to not go around and just be talking shit of if there's something there for me. But actually sometimes when there's something there for us, to be able to express it in a way that is a healing and healthy way, yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So I have a designated person in my life who's my committed listener. And so when I, when I really need just to verbally diarrhea something to get it out that's my person the commitment and the agreement and the setup is that one they don't take anything on board two they don't empathize and sympathize with me like and also they don't kind of grow it if that makes sense and the intention of it is that I get it out so that then I can clear space within myself so yeah I I am a big fan of building a team yeah and I think support is so important because you know, talking about the masculine and the feminine, I think you bring up a point of the feminine, which is receiving and allowing and surrendering and being supported. And I think so often we as women can be in the in the masculine, in the driving, in the systems, in the structures, in the being superwoman and burning out. And it's really not, we're not supporting ourselves in that. So can you speak a little bit about the masculine and the feminine and how you balance that within yourself and in your business and in your life um, to really feel in alignment rather than kind of feeling off kilter? Yeah, absolutely. Um, For me, I have historically been very masculine. So I just even want to say that straight out. So for me, in the last few years, it's about being kind of like finding that for myself and recalibrating. Um, Because for me, masculine is how I keep safe and how I also got a lot of success in my life. And I think for me in the last few years, so we live in Ubud in Bali, which is, if anyone knows, Ubud Bali is like the spiritual epicenter, it's yoga, it's um, feminine goddesses, raw food cafes, and in the last two and a half years of living here, it's really been beautiful because it's allowed me to examine what is my model of femininity, what is my model of feminine power. Because I've seen a model that looks a certain way. And I think for some people that that really suits. And I think also the risk is sometimes we can see a model of what feminine power looks like. And then we go, oh, so it has to be like that for me. Mm. Right? So it's kind of like, and I'll just be really like, like, you know, it's very soft. Like lots of girls here like wear like the hippie kind of dresses. And for some people, that's a really a true expression of feminine power for them. And it's beautiful when you see someone really expressing the truth of them. I also see sometimes women doing that because they actually feel like that's what it is to be in your feminine power. Right. It's I put on the dress and I do this and I wear a bead but here, it's right? Just but this, plain they're cool. also feeling they're also feeling out of alignment with it. So I think just first up, I want to say is it doesn't look a certain way, and like really give yourself permission once again to find what is feminine power look like for you and what does your masculine power look like look like and then play in that so then for me you know it's like my masculine power gets stuff done my masculine power is the, is the one that um has the conversations that need to be had that has direct conversations on monday my mess i was totally in my masculine power when i had a conversation with a contractor and i ended the contract and asked for a refund because really the services weren't met my, my feminine power is super creative. She's flexible. She's in flow. She loves to um, be way more spontaneous. And so, yeah, my creative flow, I was in my creative flow yesterday. We were um, filming all day, and, this, and it hadn't been fully planned, you know, and I was just trusting the creativeness and trusting that we were getting what we needed, right? So I think 
that's what it means for me is being able to pop in and out of different spaces and I think hold it hold both of those within ourselves being allow ourselves to be creative and trust ourselves and trust our instinct as well as being able to actually then step up and follow through on our instincts yeah. and I think sometimes we can be a little bit sometimes out of balance whereas we're thinking I'll intuitively know what to do the doors will open and the universe will give it to me yeah the doors open but we also have to stand up and take and walk through that door and I think that ourselves out there <laughs> balance between the two and then as we walk through the door to feel in and go like so what feels right for me after this and to be able to synergistically kind of hang out in both those spaces together and just pop between the two as we want to dance yes because I think a lot of times uh we can be an indecision you know there can be this indecision because we're focusing on this you know maybe the masculine of the systems and the structures and the the getting things done and the planning and then the other part and being in flow. And I think this alignment between the two allows us to really balance the two and make a, a good decision for ourselves and be able to know what our what our essence is in each of those areas. So, so yeah. So for me, how I have my week designed is out of the five days, Mondays and Wednesdays for me are uh, like nothing to do with my team. I don't talk team on those days, I don't um, have interviews and I'm not available for anything. And in those days I take myself into a beautiful environment and I have a pop in a pen for two days out of a week and I create. Mm. Then it's like actually if I had to use my masculinity to fill that space in, right? Right. <laughs> and, and then so then those days that ring fence for just creativity and the stuff that comes out. Sometimes I might even just sleep for the day in the sun chair, but just amazing stuff that comes out. Whereas Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm available to my team, the office days, uh, it's really following through and actually what comes out Monday, Wednesday. So yeah, like in a practical sense, we can actually build this in for ourselves these times as well. Yeah, no, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I think really our calendar can support us, the masculine and the feminine, and hold space for both. Um, and for the weekends, do you just take the, that time off? That's like your free time. Is that how you yeah. organize it? Yeah, we've got two kids, so you know it's also making sure that that's met and the family space is met. So on the whole, weekends, I might pop in on Facebook and post, but pretty much the phones are away. We're not even really allowed near them. Yeah. So how do you balance like disconnecting from technology and you know, especially in this very accessible world? Yeah, not always well. Um, but then how do I try to? <laughs> yeah, um, because, you know, I, it's it's something with working with some of the couples that I work with. They say, oh, he's on his phone. And then and then when he's off his phone, she's on her phone and then back and forth. So, you know, technology really can start to invade our, our lives if we're not conscious or careful about it. Yeah, we've got a couple of things. So, like, we've got a two-story house, for example, upstairs is work. And we don't bring our work downstairs. So downstairs is laid out for, like, we have music down there. And it's just, like, the space is different. And then in our room, we are not allowed technology even walking through. It's, like, it's not allowed through the doorway. Mm -hmm. So when we walk into our and we've had that for, I think, now 10 months. And so, you know, when we walk into our room, it's about reading and having sex. Like, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. um, like, just those things really it's help. Because to be honest, yeah, I feel the pull. So, yeah, I find we have to have agreements in place. And then on the weekends, like literally agreements for um, no technology. And then, you know, I go away also once a month. And I have three to four nights in a hotel on my own every month. Mm. And when and so that's non-negotiable. And when I do that, I have an old brick phone that I can ring for takeaways mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> or, or ring a massage therapist to come over, but I can't access the internet. Right. Yeah. And so you do that for yourself, like three days a week, just uh, three days in a month, just your own individual retreat. Individual, without my husband, without my kids, and it's at a beautiful hotel, and I go stay at different hotels every time. Yeah. And does your husband do that too? He has three days yeah. too, and you, you hold up the fort in the meantime? Yeah, so he, he has his time. He's actually just off to the Gold Coast um, next week for his. And so, yeah, he has his time, I have mine, and then we also have marriage weekends together. So we're, mm -hmm. we're really clear on what our top four pillars are, and we're right. ruthless and non-negotiable in making sure that these come before anything. 
Um, so first pillar number one is my relationship to myself. Yeah. Second pillar is my relationship to humanity. Um, third pillar is how our kids experience themselves in the world. And the fourth pillar is my contribution on the planet. So if it doesn't fit in with that, unless if these, I kind of imagine them almost like discs. Yeah. They have a check in, because the interesting thing is we say, you know, we talk about balance. Yeah. I'm constantly in and out of balance, and I think human beings are. Just, but for me, I'm constantly just checking in and going, so which discs are slowing down and need some attention to spin them up a bit, kind of energetically. Right. So, you know, I might find that, like, for example, just recently, my daughter, who's 14, just started high school. She's really needed a ton of more energetic support. And so I've just had so much of my energy going for her lately in the past, I'd say about three and a half weeks. Yeah. And then I feel my disc slowing down. Mm-hmm. I can feel it. Like I can feel it today. I just feel like just, and I said to you at the start, I feel, I feel quiet today. Right. And so, yeah, I heard this in the last about four days has really sped up. And so it's like, cool, now what does Katie Pye need? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. this one's humming this one's humming but this one needs intention yeah oh that's good yeah definitely that's wonderful and then as far as like you know when oh <laughs> your little one <laughs> uh, so our, our youngest one he's our youngest we homeschool them so he just hopped home oh great and- yeah. Nice, nice, very good. And you, so you do that too. So that that adds an element of of time and responsibility in your yeah. in your day to day. Yeah, as well as running your business. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, that must be that's a lot of you know plate spinning. It, but it sounds like you have got it managed in a way that allows all of those those discs to be honored. And I think that's why I've learned over the years to be so uncompromising and look, if it doesn't fit with those four pillars, it, it's no, you know? Right. Um, and also checking in with the alignment when people request things. Like it's totally okay if you request stuff, but it's also totally okay if you say no. And I think I've, I've said so many no's this week to people and requests because, look, there's things that are really important that if they're not getting met, it's, it's, it's not on. So how do you manage FOMO, fear of missing out? Does that, does that, have you heard that phrase before? Yeah, yeah, I think for me it's, instead of FOMO, I feel so excited by what I'm creating. Mm-hmm. It's definitely don't feel like I'm missing out by saying no to stuff. I feel excited, like I'm really juiced up by what it is I'm up to. What I think comes up for me the most is not as wanting to please people. And I feel like that's probably the part that I can get that comes up for me when I say no. Like, I should be saying yes. So I just said no to, I think, about four interviews this week. Because I had to feel into it. I was like, no, nah, it's just it's just not quite a fit. Yeah. And that also I wanted to fabric soften for them. Yeah. So one thing I have in place as a team, so they say no sometimes for me. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. That solves my problem. Well, then I feel especially honored that you were on this summit. I, I really enjoyed this conversation. I think it was very fruitful. It was very purposeful, very meaningful. I think it's going to be very powerful for a lot of people that get the opportunity to, to listen to this conversation um, and really uh, benefit from and, and incorporate some of the principles that we've, we've been uh, chatting about today. So um, I know you have a, a special gift to share with uh, with our audience. Uh, can you share a little bit about that and uh, how people yeah. can stay connected to you? Yeah, absolutely. So you can connect with me on any social media. So mainly Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I put out, um, I call them blockbusters on YouTube, and they're about 90 seconds, but they're just a way in which we can keep challenging ourselves just to go beyond the old stuff we've been coming out with. So that's at Kate Marie O'Brien. And so if you go to gamechangervip.com, there's some sort of opportunity for some training there as well. Wonderful. And I'll include that link um, with this interview so people can access it easily. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being on on today's um, summit. And do you have any last-minute takeaways or highlights that you want to make sure people walk away with? Yeah. Thank you. I'd love to say this. Just... Wherever you're at, I know that sometimes we can put so much pressure on ourselves that we have to be somewhere, we have to get somewhere, that we have to um, like 
fix whatever problem we think we are. I just want to remind you that actually, seriously, and I'm, if you've got nothing else, just hear this. We all experience stuff underneath, even those people that you're looking to and you're thinking that, oh, you know, they've just magically got this formula that they've sorted all of that stuff out. No, you're just not seeing all of their life. Like those things that you're going through, you're not alone in them. It is absolutely a shared human experience. And I think primarily when you get that, you can actually just give yourself permission to breathe, <laughs> like <laughs> hang out in your cells a little bit more and just chill in your life and realize that actually it's a bit more of a game than you realize. It's not like you have to get to a certain place. It's all significant. It's actually a bit more of a game. And like be playful with all of that stuff that comes up and just know you're already freaking awesome. <laughs> I love it. Wonderful takeaway. I think that we all we all need to hear and, and deserve to hear and be reminded of. So thank you so much and uh, wonderful. Uh, this is a great conversation. Thank you.